everybody for cooperation, uh, for all the activities, amen, that we have had last week, and all our invited speakers amen. have done their best. Amen. It's a blessing that we we have uh, Pastor Ramos, amen. we have Pastor Astrologo uh, from Lidbridge, Pastor Thunder, amen, and of course our Pastor Philip William Mahatukon, all the way from Davao City. I know it's not easy for me to, you know, to left and come here and uh, leave the bow and come here and uh, be with us for a few, few months. Amen. It's a sacrifice, especially for a thriving and growing church. We, in fact, today in their ch uh, church service, uh, he invited three speakers. Amen. Who are preaching in their church services, their services. And it was just amazing. And uh, while uh, Pastor Philip is here, so he'll be helping us, especially for our cell group meeting and le uh, leaders meeting and in our music, so we can ask him, praise the Lord, to also help in any, in any way he can. Praise the Lord. All right, I will not that delay. I want you uh, to stand with me as we honor to do it about the Word of God. Amen. Everybody say, I love the Word of God. I love the Word of God. The Word of God is so powerful. Remember this, brethren. And uh, I was even thinking that one of the discussion that we'll be discussing for our cell group leaders is that uh, in our observation, in many churches, what are the ways and the hows? where the church can grow. And I have noticed one of the prominent groups is in Australia, I believe, that they have a very growing church. If thousands of people are coming to their church. But you know what? Their focus is they discover the power of worship. The people learn to worship God through musical instruments and through their singing. That is one of the secret of how to grow a church. But the only problem, right. they can sing for one hour or two hours, but they will only listen to the preaching for 10 minutes. Oh. And that is very dangerous. That's right, yes. amen. Praise God. Heaven and earth was created through the spoken word of God. Right. Don't allow the devil to tempt you mm -hmm. to be distracted of learning the word of God. That's right. Because personally, I believe that worship is very important. Amen. But teaching yes. is very, very important yes. in the church. Amen. That's why we are called apostolic. Because we are rooted in the Word of God. That's right. Right. You cannot go to heaven with just 10 minutes. Word of God and then you can jump and run. But when it comes to the Word of God, you will go because you don't like the Word of God. Oh. Come on. Now let's go. Praise God. Hallelujah. The devil is always there. 24 hours working. That you will lose your appetite to listen to the preaching of the Word. And that is very dangerous. Be careful of your soul. Keep your soul intact. Because the Lord is coming very soon. Amen. We are not playing games here, brethren. Praise God. So as a pastor, I want to remind you. And we will talk more about that. Praise the Lord in our leadership meeting. Hallelujah, because there are things, sometimes it's this balance. We need to be balanced in everything we do. All right, for the word of God today. In 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 12, but the Romel will continue to help me today. 12 and 13, wherefore, I will not be diligent, negligent, to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them and be established 
in the present truth. Yea, I think it need as long as I am in this body, this tabernacle, to stir you up, meaning to encourage you mm -hmm. by putting you in remembrance. Uh, uh, means, uh, uh, you know, sang a song. Can you imagine? If I only imagine, meaning, if I can still, if I can just remember. Mm. Yes. Because, you know, the devil is trying to put some spiritual amnesia right. that we tend to forget right. Hallelujah. what the Lord has done in our life. Amen. That's why Peter said, Wherefore I will not be negligent as an apostolic, as a pastor. Amen. We need to be diligent. Yes. Amen. In preaching, in teaching, to put you always in remembrance of these things. We will preach the word through you know them and be established in the present truth. In the present truth. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, I think in me as long as I am in this tabernacle. Yeah. While I am alive, Hallelujah. I will do my best yes. to stir you up and put in you in the universe. Praise God. Now, to remember in the Old Testament, in Exodus chapter 12, <coughs> verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. God said, whether you like it or not, if you become stubborn, I will execute judgment because I am the Lord. Amen. That's what he said. And the blood shall be to you for a token or mean a sign upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. Everybody say a memorial. Memorial. And ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Seven days ye shall eat the living bread. Even the first day ye shall put away living out of your houses. For whoever eateth living bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. And in the first day there shall be an holy gathering convocation. And in the seventh day there shall be a holy convocation to you. No, no matter of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. I want to speak to you uh, to be really fun uh, today. We are here in Canada, but in America right now, they are celebrating their Memorial Day. As you all know, that Memorial Day, uh, that is the time where they commemorate the thing. They remember the heroic act of the people of the past. One of that in America is President Lincoln. One of the prominent presidents of the United States. And here in Canada, we have prominent people that uh, either in Ottawa or in, in BC or anywhere in big cities, they have some monument or uh, they call it a uh, statue being made for them, for the people to remember. It's a memorial. And uh, yeah, so I want to speak to you on the subject, let's build a memorial. Amen. Amen. Praise God, let's build a memorial. Something to think about, something to remember. Father God of heaven, 
I declare right now through the preaching of the word that the word of God will come to us, will bring encouragement, will bring direction and understanding of your purpose in our lives. Lord, thank you so much. Amen. For the people in the past that they give their lives, praise God for the gospel. But most of all, you, Father God, who give yourself on the cross of Calvary. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For our salvation. Hallelujah. So bless us, Lord, in Jesus' name. You may be sitting. what I have said Memorial Day is a public holiday in the U.S. and here in Canada we have also Canada Day. We prepare Canada Day. July 1st. July 1st. July 1st. And how about October? Thanksgiving. What is that? Thanksgiving. Remembrance Day. Remembrance Day is the Memorial Day. Remembering the soldiers, the army, the armed forces. Yes, I mean, we have a lot of holidays and it's very meaningful Amen. to us. And uh, yeah, so uh, in the U.S. they honor the armed forces who give their lives to their freedom. Amen. And of course here in Canada, we have also like uh, the founding anniversary of Canada. Right, and uh, we all enjoy because you have no work that time, and uh, uh, maybe we can go somewhere in where's that? Hold it up. It's very hard to pronounce the place. Amen, and uh, do some vacation, something like that. Praise God. And uh, as you remember, the statues were built for their memory, their memory, their bravery, their heroic act. Amen. And uh, in the Philippines, we have also some heroes. Amen. Praise the Lord. There are also some fake heroes. But uh, we want the, the real heroes. Okay? Praise the Lord. And uh, uh, here in Canada, one that really gave me an encouragement is the story of uh, not the president or the prime minister, but uh, it's just a simple guy. It was just an ordinary guy just lived like you and me. Amen. And this guy is like, I think the mother is Mitis and a Canadian, pure Canadian. And uh, in, her, uh, in his story, his name is still uh, uh, Terry Fox. Have you ever heard about him? Canadian? Amen. Amen. Uh, I don't know about the students uh, your school talk about him. Yeah. yeah, talk about him. According to uh, his short story, I have a long story about him, but uh, just to mention a few, that this uh, man is not really big man, I think he's only like five feet or something. And he was born July 28, 1958. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, uh, he was a Canadian athlete, humanitarian. Cancer research activist in 1980 with one leg, with one leg. Because what happened? Yeah, you see the picture? Yeah. That is Terry Fox. And uh, in his story, because he's a cancer survivor, actually what happened is that he made an accident when he was driving his car and he just ignored the pain on his knee. And he was, uh, he was playing basketball and he was playing uh, many kinds of sports and he was very competitive. He just ignored it. And then finally, when he went to the doctor, the doctor said, you have cancer. So he, the, the doctor amputated the leg. But this guy never stopped. He is determined. He said, from now on, I will make a drive. I will walk. Yeah, in his story here, uh, I will start from uh, Fox was a distance runner and basketball player for his Port uh, Coquitlam, British Columbia High School and 
and Simon Fraser University. His right leg was amputated in 1977 after he was diagnosed with uh, osteosarcoma. Though he continued to run using an artificial leg, he also played wheelchair basketball in Vancouver, winning three national championships. In 1980, he began the Marathon of Hope, a cross-country run to raise money for cancer research. He made a Marathon of Hope, a cross-country run to raise money for cancer research. He hoped to raise one dollar from one inch of Canada's 24 million people during that time. He began with a little fanfare from St. John, Newfoundland, in April and ran the equivalent of full marathon every day. Fox had be become a national star by the time he reached Ontario. He made numerous public appearances with businessmen, athletes, politicians, and his efforts to raise money. He, for he was forced to end his run outside Thunder Bay when the cancer spread to his lungs. His hopes of overcoming the disease and completing his marathon ended when he died nine, nine months later. In addition to being the youngest person ever named the champion of the Order of Canada, Fox won in 1980 Low March Award as the nation, nation's top sportsman and was named Canada's Newsmaker of the Year in 1980 to 1981. Considered a national hero, he had many buildings, statues, roads, and parks named in his honor across the country. A man with one leg. And I can tell you more how much money he raised for cancer patients. So this is an inspiration for all of us. Amen. If Terry Fox can do it with one leg. Yes. And right now, I think in British Columbia, there is a monument or statue. Yes. And also in Ottawa, there is one there, I believe. Amen. Reminding the people that there is there is power in one man. Yes. Just one man can impact, can cause an impact. But today, mm, I will not just talk about theory facts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If there is a memorial intended for theory facts, in the biblical sense, memorial is a sacrifice, Amen. a monument or an event that bring us into remembrance of something that God yes. has done. Yes. Clap your hands and worship the Lord. That's why we need to remind you. We need, we need to remember always. Every day in my life, I will not forget what He has done for Amen. me. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. I don't know where I am now if it is not because of the love of our God. I still believe in the power of John 3.16 when the Bible said, For God so loved the world yes. that He gave His only begotten Son hallelujah. that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. The Bible says that the memory of the righteous is a blessing. Amen. Yeah. And it says of the wicked that his memory perishes from the earth. So I want to be remembered, brethren, amen, that I am doing the will of God. Yeah. I am serving God. Amen. I, we have a lot of heroes in our lives. Praise the Lord. I have a lot of heroes. One of that is my parents. They are not really women or people in the Philippines. Praise God, my father was a, a farmer and uh, a pastor. Amen. In the eyes of many people, it seems he's just, he's just an ordinary guy. 
But during his time, he loses more than 30 preachers out of a barrio, just a community that he pastored. More than 30 preachers. Some of them are already teachers of our Bible college. But you know, then they're just other than that. My mom is a hero for me. Praise God, a couple that has the vision to preach the apostolic truth. They will always say to us, children, we don't have things in this world for you to inherit. But we have the truth. Praise God. We have the truth. Amen. Praise God. Not only they are willing to spend their own money sponsoring crusade or revival service just to open a church in that barrio, in that place, that barangay. Amen. Praise God. I have a lot of heroes in my life. The elders, the pastors, amen, that I was with. Amen. The leaders that I worked with before. Their prayers, their encouragement. Hallelujah. Praise God. Even those uh, youth leaders before when they saw me in the Bible school, a timid, shy young man, they would just put their arms and say, One day, God will use this man. Amen. That's why I use it, I make it a point. Praise God that every time I am in the church, I will only sit down at the back if I am the usher. But if not, I'm always at the front. Mm -hmm. And when the preacher, after preaching the word, I, I will run and grab the hand of the preacher and put on my head. Praise God, I make that a point. Pray for me. I even saw my picture in the Pentecostal hero in the U.S. I said, who is this young man crying out with a big mouth? <laughs> I was the one. <laughs> I never thought that he took picture of me and that speaker praying for me. Because I believe in the power of prayer. Yes. Yes. Lord, this is a culture of hallelujah. Lord, so we have heroes in our lives that we appreciate. People who are teaching. I can even still remember our Sunday school teacher. Amen, amen. Don't you know that the mother of Brother Alerta in Calgary, my mom uh, told me that the mother of that brother was my Sunday school teacher when I was a boy. <laughs> and the Sunday school teacher, you know, teaching us sing, how to sing. And then I was the first boy who said, I want to be baptized. In Rojas, North Cotabato, I was the first boy that was baptized in Jesus' name. And then the pastor just, the one who did not want to baptize me because I'm very young. <laughs> put me aside and I will run again and make a line. And put me aside and I will run again and apparently nobody. So he needs to baptize me <laughs> in Jesus' name. Amen. And I received the Holy Ghost. That my grand my grandfather carried me home. I think three or four kilometers carrying me home. I'm already a big boy. Carrying me home because I fall asleep speaking in tongues. Oh hallelujah. I love the Holy Ghost. Clap your hands and praise God. In the name of Jesus. So brethren, some memorials are to aid man's memory in preserving what he cherishes the most. Even Jesus, I remember, Brother Romero, it's not in our notes, but I just remember one time when Jesus was preaching or teaching, and then I think there was a collection of offering or something. Uh, can, can you go there in Matthew chapter 26? Verse, uh, verse, we'll start verse 6. This is almost end of Matthew, even 26 verse 6. 
Now in the, when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the Leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box. You know the story, right? Of a, a very precious winter. And poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation. Come on. Indignation. They're angry. Saying to what purpose is this waste? For them, it's a waste to pour out a precious ointment of that woman to Jesus. For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. Whoa! It seems they have concern, eh? Yes. But when Jesus understood it, oh, his understanding, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she had wrought a good work upon me. Yes. Yes. For ye have the poor always with you. But me, ye have not always. For in that she had poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Hallelujah. Verily, can we read together, everybody? Verily, we say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also be this woman that died. We go for her memorial. Wow. Don't you know that you are making a memorial too? Hallelujah. Yes. The Lord is remembering you. He is so God. When you preach this gospel message, remember the woman. Yes. Don't you know that even Faith Revival Center, time will come we're not here anymore. But the Lord will remind the people who will follow us and say, I remember Hallelujah. that. I remember that. Moment. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think we can pour out a prayer of worship. Our praise. Hallelujah. Come on. We can do better than that. Hallelujah. Right now. of the fact that your life is full of troubles and trials. A lot of you are in situations that, that is too hard. And it seems God is so far. But amen, God is so proud. Amen. Maybe you are just like Job asking God a question. Why? Why this happened to me? And now Job needs some encouragement. Job needs help. Oh, thank God he has three friends. Three friends of Job visited him. And if you study his life, Job was waiting for an encouragement of all those bad things that had happened. Can you imagine three people Three friends. Within seven days, no words from them. No words that came out from the mouth. They just look at Job with their big eyeballs. Is it in the Bible? Seven days, no words. Look at Job. With big questions, see, you're serving God, you're doing everything. What happened to you? It's so beautiful situation. If you have some friends, instead of helping you, they will just look at you with big eyes. They don't really care. But it's, it's easy for them to say, oh, I love you, Pastor. I love you, brother. I love you, sister. But if you are in a difficult situation, they will just look at you. Is my eyes big? I try. 
I'm not the Chinese. Come on. I'm not the China man. And you see? It happens. Yes. Read the story of Job. Seven days without words from those friends. Hallelujah. But you know, Job was stable. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, I have a lot of questions. Lord. Hallelujah. But wow, I wish I had time to preach to you about you know their conversation. When he start asking God a question. Amen. God also started asking him a question. Where are you when I created the trees, the flowers, the mountains? And they're, where are you? Who are you? Who will ask the question? Because sometimes when we are in a difficult situation, we keep on asking God, Why me, Lord? Why me, Lord? Why not you? Is it correct question? Why not you? Oh my God, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So brethren, just like this woman, oh hallelujah. So every time we preach the gospel, please don't forget the memorial of this woman. Amen. Oh hallelujah. Amen. In Acts chapter 10, in Acts chapter 10, verse, I think, 3 or 4, then he saw in a vision immediately about 9 hour of the day, and the angel of God coming into him, saying unto him, Cornelius, and when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? Everybody say, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up. Thank you, Lord. For what? Glory wow. Lord. Don't you know that anything we do, heavens, recording it. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, church. Our praises, our glory, hallelujah, must be to the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, it does not come as memorial. In the text we read a while ago, but before that, I just want to read this. Uh, yeah, Exodus 12, we read it a while ago, amen. Praise the Lord. And we just go to Exodus chapter 16. Exodus chapter 16, verse 32. And Moses said, This thing which the Lord commanded, fill an hour of it for keep for your generations, that ye may see the bread wherewith I have fed you in the wilderness, when I brought you forth from the land of Egypt. Remember? I was thinking. What is in the Ark of the Covenant? If this is the Ark of the Covenant, what is inside? The, remember that the Ark of the Covenant represents the presence of God. Amen. Remember that when the children of Israel will bring the Ark of the Covenant with them, even during the war, they can have a sure victory. Amen. Why? Because the ark represent the presence of God. Everybody say the presence of God. The presence of God. The power of God. The, power of God. the anointing of God. The anointing. What is it inside? The bread. The manna. Praise God. You cannot survive without the bread. And the bread represents the word of God. Preserve it for your children to remember Amen. that in your journey in the wilderness, I was with you. Praise God. I gave you bread. And what else? The commandments, the tablets. Before I saw you having tablets, 
Before you have tablet, Moses has a tablet over you. <laughs> and he put that tablet inside the ark of the covenant. That is the word of God, the commandments of God. And the third, what is the rod of Aaron that budded. Because when there was a problem, people are asking question, why? Why is it that Aaron is always the man? Moses, we are also the children of Israel. How come? Aaron is always still with you. We have also the power. We have also the anointing. We have also the wisdom and everything. And then to make the long story short, Moses instructed them through the instruction of God to bring, every tribe will bring a rock and bring it to the tabernacle. And whoever rock blossom or body that is the proof, that is the sign that the hand of God, the anointing of God is upon him. Yes. And among the tribes of Israel, it was Aaron's rod that body. Praise God. And I would like to declare to you today by the grace of God, not because I'm boastful, not because I'm proud, but under the power of the Holy Ghost, yes. I say to you Hallelujah. that this ministry will be followed with signs and wonders. Hallelujah. 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 Signs and wonders will follow. Many people will say, oh, Hallelujah. we have the church. But the one that will make the difference are signs and wonders. Amen, amen. If you believe in God, you will hear it. And shout hallelujah. Shout glory. Hallelujah. I just feel the Holy Ghost right now. Hallelujah. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, I want you to imagine right now. Amen. The rod of Aaron. The rod of Aaron, amen. Hallelujah. Is in our midst. It is the Holy Ghost. It is the power of God. It is the anointing of God. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Brethren. So that in the okay, that verse in 33 verse 33, Moses said to Aaron. Take a pot and put an over full of manna therein and lay it up before the Lord to be kept for your generations. As Moria and Moses said, This is the thing which the Lord commanded. Fill an over of, uh, is it 32? Where are we now? 34. 34. Fill, okay, 34. And the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron laid it up before testimony. To be kept. Wow. And the children he said it man 40 years until they came to a land in inhabited. They did it mana until they came unto the borders of the land of Canaan. Church, God provided food for them to eat all the years that they were in the wilderness. I declare right now. Faith revival center church so that yes, will continue to enjoy the word. Hallelujah. Our central leaders, hallelujah. hallelujah, will continue to, to preach the word, will continue to preach. It's the fruit in this journey. And they came to the Jordan River. And this is what we read about in our scripture text. This the afternoon, Joshua commanded 12 stones to be taken out of Jordan River.
to be set up as a memorial of how God cut off the waters of the Jordan and allowed another signs and wonders them to pass over the dry ground. He also set up 12 stones in the middle of the Jordan River to be a memorial as well as the mighty hand of God. Amen. He did this to keep it in their memory. Oh, hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to imagine and think about it. Amen. We must also build memorials in our life as well. It is something that keeps a memory alive as a lasting evidence of something notable. If we have revival, if we have victory, it is not because of our own ability, Amen. but it is because of our God. It is because of the Emmanuel. Come on, church. Because of the Emmanuel, it is not here. Has God ever held your body? That is a question. Has God ever held your body? Bear a memorial. Has God ever delivered you from alcohol? Bear a memorial. Praise God. Has God delivered you from drugs? Bear a memorial. Has God filled you with the Holy Ghost? Worshiping God. Yes, yes, yes. 
You cannot survive without coming to church and praying. Amen. But the Bible study, we need the word. Hallelujah. That is our memorial. We remember it. So the devil will tell you that nothing happened. You can put him back to your memorial and tell him, God changed me. He yes, is Lord. He changed my life. Praise God. And remember, Calvary is our memorial. Amen. Praise God. I said, Calvary Amen. is our memorial. Amen. Praise God. Can you still remember the old rugged cross? Can you still remember the place called Castle Down? The field of God. Can you still remember the time when Jesus cried, I thirst? Hallelujah. Praise God. It's the memorial church. I want Brother Patsau. Amen. He has a song to remind us. Oh God. Hallelujah. And if you feel to remember Calvary, if you can think of the cross of Jesus when you pay the price, if you can remember the 40 stripes he received, Hallelujah. In 186, I will be brother. All the hills are If you want to think of Calvary, I want you to sing it with all your heart.